Welcome to the Bailiwick Express podcast. This is Behind the Headlines, a backstage pass to our work throughout the week. This week we're dusting ourselves off after Storm Kieran battered the Channel Islands. We talk about the damage wrought upon us, the action plan in place to protect us, and how the community pulled together during a particularly difficult night. Thank you for joining us. Talking about what we did over the last couple of days, talking about what the island dealt with, um, and talking about where we are now. So I'm Matthew Leach. In the corner over there, who was doing all the photography yesterday, is... Oh, I'm going to speak at this point. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Nick Mann. Laura Clayton. And Kit Hanna. Welcome. So, of course, we just had Storm Kieran hit the island. Um, it wasn't quite as bad, I don't think, as it was, as it was planned to be. Is that, is that the case, Kit? Yeah, so um, the sort of first inklings of this came out on a Monday morning. Everyone woke up, was like, oh, there's, looks like there's a storm brewing and on the way, and it's barreling straight towards Europe. Um, and the days building up, it was pretty much guaranteed that it was going to hit at least northern France or southern England. So we fall right in the middle of that. Models are produced every single day, um, doing various runs, computer modelling of um, what the storm will be and how it might hit. And um, by the evening of Wednesday of this week, it was confirmed that it was going to be a direct hit for the Channel Islands with the strongest winds, avoiding England, but definitely hitting the Channel Islands and northern france so uh, obviously that was why everyone was concerned and the emergency services made a good call to make everyone stay at home um they called it a major incident major incident um meteorologists called it a bullseye for the channel islands predicting 100 mile per hour gusts now that did happen in alderney and jersey but guernsey was actually spared um, the strongest winds as the storm actually moved further south um, but it was a, it was a huge storm because as it was growing the atmospheric pressure was dropping and dropping and dropping very fast I can't remember the exact term that was used it was explosive cyclogenesis is a word that's been thrown out <laughs> you're, you're I mean, na- we, we, you've, you've just made that up you're a natural no, that's real. You are. cyclogenesis we, we all became like meteorologists yeah. for a few days didn't we like obsessing over these models and um, but basically the the lower the air pressure drops basically the the colder air drier air comes in the stronger winds get um which is why people were so concerned when it dropped to 950 millibars which is much lower than that was that was seen in 1987 when it promised strong winds and of course we saw strong winds we did and um so we were all told to stay at home which we did because we're very good some people didn't some people are out there. Well, I know we've spoken a lot about this in the office, but we still talked about um, Inglorious Fishing. Obviously, did that live yeah. YouTube feed overnight, so that's been a, that was inc- incredibly popular. Thousands of people watched that. Thousands. Um, but it's we all stayed at home. Isn't it, that storm chasing, and not actually just storms, but extreme weathers of any type, are so popular in that sense. Yeah, they I are. Mean, that, it's not just a Guernsey thing. That happens all over the world. You know, severe like snowfall or hail. In fact, did you see the pictures of some of the hail that was falling in Jersey? Yeah, they had like, like ice that. bombs. Yeah, but that kind of weather um, commentary is just so so popular. So entertaining and people. Entertaining. Pe- well, yes. people want to, it draws people together. It yeah, absolutely. pulls people into like a public conversation. I mean, you watch the storm chasing videos from America and yeah. the hurricane chasing the vehicles they use, and you know, it's an industry, it's a business, isn't it? Um, and they I do. think our police maybe tried that with their armored Land Rover. <laughs> they as did. Well. They yeah, was it out was out on the so road. We did get use. confirmation of that, so that was great. Um, nice to know the insurance has been kept up to date over the yeah, how many so they can use it whenever they need to use it. Yeah. Um, it was a deterrent against the uh, seawater coming over the seawater. What case it's armed? So we were all at home, but we were all working very hard. Nick, you were out and about seeing a bit because we're at the end. We're at the tail end of it now. This is we know the storm has hit. I mean, what kind of uh, damage did we see in Guernsey? So I yeah, I went out. I waited for the winds to drop. Obviously, and we know that the. Um, Emergency services, civil protection, everyone's been out clearing the roads as well. So, um, But I was eager to get out as well, um, just so that we could report on what was happening around the island. And I think there were a few things I was reflecting on before. One of it is, is the smell. It was, <laughs> it was absolutely pine. You could smell pine in the air yeah. like as you smell. go around. Yeah, especially Summary Park and um, where quite a few, a couple of really big trees had gone down there. Um, but the gap was 
five, six, seven trees. I was saying earlier, I'm not sure which ones are, were entirely fresh and which ones were, were older trees, mm. but um, the smell and okay, yes, it smells of pine in the pine forest, but once you've got freshly broken yeah. pine, it's incredible. Um, and the other thing was the sound. When I got out my house in the Vale, I could hear chainsaws. So just an incredible job by the tree yeah. surgeons going around, making the clearing roads, making things safe, just straight away. Incredible, incredible work going on there. But the, 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 I suppose the, um, the, I think there's like 70 trees down altogether. That's the official line, isn't it? But, yeah. Um, I was Probably wondering, more. as I drove in this morning, so I didn't leave my flat at all yesterday. I didn't set foot outside my front door. Um, so when we left this morning to do the school run and then for me to drive into town, um, we actually, one of the lanes that we normally go through was blocked with a tree. So we had to reverse and go back another way. And then we drove through um, one of the lanes near Capels. So somebody who's got, you know, a lot of land there and you could see the trees that had come down and the other trees that were just completely bare. And there were some gardeners, tree surgeons working there. And in fact, one of them, he, he had that kind of comical pose, hands on hips. He's like looking up, looking around. And I thought, God, imagine what's going through his mind now. Like one of those, where do I start type things. Mm. Um, but I wondered, as I kind of was driving past these places this morning, whether this 70 trees down figure, is that on public land or blocking roads? Yeah, or that does might it be... cover everyone's no. garden? No, no. it won't. It's the kind of soil Yeah, it's the so stuff many. on public roads yeah. that are reported. I mean... Yeah. Um, so many that you know we'll never know about because they're at the bottom of a field at the yeah. bottom of someone's garden um no one's gone around and accurately yeah, it could, it must <laughs> counted hundreds, every it must single one it must be hundreds well really. have they we, do, we don't know maybe there is a what a tree a, a glorious a fishing tree. style live stream <laughs> logging well, all the trees he'd probably have the most accurate count actually he probably, he probably would he, he's he, got time kit this afternoon you could watch <laughs> his videos back. Yeah. All, all eight hours of them yeah i think um it, it also, it was, it's so noticeable how it's the pines that go. Yeah, you mentioned and, that earlier yeah, today. Yeah, and, and when you look at it, you obviously you know why, because they've got such a shallow root base. And I think that happened in 87 as well, in the great storm there. Um, that rid us of a load of these, these trees. So, Yeah, I remember, because I mean, I was only at primary school in 87. Um, one of my aunties would have been going to what was Blanchland College up in St. Martin's at the time. It's now a nursing home. So anyone who's ever driven up there will know there's like a kind of a, a long driveway. And when it was the school, it was the school field on one side and the tennis and netball courts on the other. And they had trees lining like this lovely driveway up to the convent. Um, and in 87, most of those trees were just down. Oh, really? Just, uh, had fallen. Um, and I seem to remember, was it a big tree in Trinity Square came down? Because we lived in... Um, the Villa when I was a kid and I think Trinity Square had a couple of trees that had fallen down so it's those things that you remember because um, they're so visual isn't it like yeah. when a tree is across the road you, you remember it um, but it's those other little things like I don't know the noises I can remember on Wednesday night when I was sitting at home and the wind you could hear the wind was building and I could hear a few like cracking noises almost. And I don't it's know what not they what were. you want to hear. When <laughs> you're no, but in your there's house. no, there's no. Luckily, I mean, oh, where I live near Delancey Park, um, but yeah, it was just those weird noises that you could hear in amongst the wind. Um, and that's something that I think I'll remember from this time. Those cracking sounds where I was like, "Ooh." <laughs> mm. Well, that? there was definitely a, a, a fair amount of damage, but I think touch wood, nobody was hospitalised in Guernsey. They ran that as a no, statement, yeah. which was. I mean, we'll, t we'll touch base on Jersey later on, but um, we, we you know we came out quite lucky for that, really. Definitely, I mean, especially when you consider there was damage at the hospital itself. Was it over the maternity unit? So over, yeah, part of the roof. Over where Loveridge Ward is, um, but they said no one was hurt, and they didn't have to move any of the the, uh, the mums and babies from Loveridge Ward or anything. So that's good. Um, and actually, I, I I saw on social media, um, so the house at the Boet that had the the kind of the yeah, the, the facing the cladding came down. was pulled yeah. off it. The guy that lives there is a builder, and he had to go to work at the hospital yesterday to patch up the hospital roof. <laughs> really? Um, well, I guess the well, GHA were probably fixing his house, hopefully. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's... you know. We did see a lot of GHA housing getting battered yeah. during the storm, unfortunately. Mm. It's that interesting contrast, isn't it, with the, the, the granite buildings from the 19th, 20th mm. century? Yeah. Yeah. Modern construction. Even though there was the one... Lovely granite cottage down by St Andrews that got crushed by a tree. Didn't you see that picture yeah. yesterday? Yeah, that, was, that was quite devastating. 
But again, like we said, no one hurt. Which no, is exactly. So well, I think that, think that like picture that. was actually from Jersey. Was it? Yeah, apparently so, yeah. Oh, well, I was told uh, that was a St. Andrews seat. No, the, well, this, it's, it's this is one to of tell. the things we need to clarify when yeah. we come across well, photographs the, over the, the course of the day. The social media, isn't it? Especially when people have got friends and colleagues across the Channel Islands. So photos and videos and anecdotes get shared. Yeah. And it's where did they actually happen? I mean, one property that um, people have been moved out of in Guernsey is at the Felcont, um, where... There was a house that was having work done to it and the scaffolding that's been around that house, some of it came loose or some of the sheeting or something came loose and landed on another house. So I think both of those properties have been evacuated um, just while the scaffolding yeah. is all tightened back up in the correct places. Um, that must have been very scary if you were yeah. in either of those houses. Uh, yesterday morning. Well, we know we're, we're t- trying to talk to somebody at the moment from uh, Alderney whose mm. roof came off their house over there because Alderney was hit quite badly. And as you said, Kit, that was one of the places that recorded a um, like 100 quite, mile an hour plus 100 yeah. mile an hour plus winds. And so they're living in a hotel now. So we do have to think about some people who were quite badly impacted by this. Yeah. And people were, even if not actually impacted when it happened, I saw on social media a lot of um, comments ahead of the storm and as it was building on Wednesday night there was a lot of anxiety um, yeah. and a lot of worry and so there would have been a lot of relief I'm hoping yesterday when people were like actually we've not been too badly affected but there was that real anxiety that you could kind of sense as the as the storm was approaching. And quite sensibly our state's a lot of things were closed down, schools were closed down, um, bus services were, were stopped for the day. Um, you know, we know that the ferries were stopped for the day. The airport was closed down. I mean, what has what have we got open now again? I know you're working on something this morning about the shipping. We should be um, pretty much back up and running with several things. Commodore Goodwill's already been in and gone um, to Jersey with freight. Um, Hopefully, Lou Roll as well. Hopefully, yeah, Lou Roll. Yeah, Lou Roll bread. Um, various other things have been low on the shelves. Um, but Why? Clip is coming Why have in. they been low Why? on the Why, exactly. Loads yeah. of milk, um, though, because the dairy was open yesterday. Loads yeah, of milk. We, we've been um, told plenty about the dairy, so that's good. Clip is coming in this evening and also going to Jersey, and it looks like the sailings scheduled for tomorrow are going ahead as well. Fantastic. I mean, um, flights are also resuming um, from this morning. We'll have to check that as we're recording this. Now the first flights may have actually left. Um, uh, he was meant to resume from 10, wasn't it? Yeah. So, so we should we should be back up and running. Um, one business which won't be open today is the one at um, Nick. You went there yesterday Lowlands. to get photos, didn't you? At Lowlands Industrial Estate. Yes. And I was yeah. sent some additional photos from there last night. Um, is it an electrical wholesalers um, at the Lowlands Industrial Estate that had some? Yeah. Quite. It looked like damage. an entire roof yeah. had come off. Um, but you were t- talking about stats this morning about um, roofers sounding like they've got a lot of work on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which is great. Um, not great. <laughs> <laughs> great for business, not so great for those who are being worked on. Yes. Well, maybe uh, not great if you were a customer that already had some work booked in, because presumably all the emergencies yeah. Yeah. will shift everything else down the line. They're saying As it's going to. As we know, the construction industry is yeah, exactly. kind of working almost to capacity as it is. Yeah. Um, as you, you mentioned just before the airport, I've just checked the mail plane ar- arrived, landed at 10.08. There we go. Uh, there we go. We're back to normal then. To Alden, uh, from Alderney due to arrive at five past 11. What about departures? The first flight to Southampton was airborne at 10.07. Great. So we're back up and running. is delayed. Oh, well. <laughs> that's, we'll that's, a, that sounds like we'll an airport keep, thing. We'll keep yeah. an eye on that. Um, bus services are back up. School buses are back up. The schools haven't all gone back. No. Um, we, we ran something briefly on that yesterday as well and we did have an update this morning so um, we had uh, all the schools were going back but the, it was the College of FE campus was that right? The two there was two campuses two campuses um, both of the College of Further Education sites received significant water damage as a result of pre-existing issues with the building so are not open yet no um, one can be surprised by that no one can be surprised we, by that we, we knew we that those buildings were a bit yeah would have taken a battering and ladies college remains closed this morning as well apparently did you hear that one laura as well i did hear that but i i'm not sure why i think it was actually nick did you say it was to do with or somebody i thought said it was to yeah do with no, trees it, it on was the me site. i believe yeah uh, trees it's on just the... it's, it's about making the, the site safe before the students good yeah. back. which is yeah. a good thing to do um so we're kind of all getting back to normal again and um 
Has anyone else got anything they want to touch on about the storm before we... Uh, I know Jersey got it incredibly badly. I mean, particularly badly. Um, because we have our colleagues in Jersey who we talked to quite a lot. And, um, I mean, they had a... I mean, has it been officially confirmed that it was a tornado? I think um, the phrase used by Jersey Matt this morning is torna- tornadic or tornadic <laughs> feature. So I think we can probably assume it was The words you're coming out with. If, if, yeah. if we can assume it was twisting winds. Twisting yeah. winds, okay. Twisting winds is powerful, powerful enough, enough to cause destruction. Because, um, the Channel Islands can't officially oh, yeah. have a hurricane, yeah. but we can have hurricane strength winds. So would it be that? And I don't... It's to do with temperatures and... Yeah, I mean the video I is pretty. We're, we're um, all going back to our GCSE geography now. Aren't yeah, we? yeah, like trying to remember what's a hurricane, a tornado. And yeah, um, but if that. basically, if you're on the south, um, was it um, east coast of Jersey on the early hours of Thursday morning, then um, it would have been a particularly rough ride. Well, they had um, families who were evacuated from homes because roofs came off. They had refuges yeah. that were full. All the ten parish halls were used as a kind of base for people who needed mm. somewhere safe to go in the evening. And um, I mean, and some people were hospitalised over in Jersey. Yeah. So you know, our thoughts go out to them, and I hope they get to, you know, sports clubs as well. I mean, their ta- oh, table oh, tennis oh, centre yeah. and table tennis um, yeah. have just been totally destroyed, um, which is a shame. Real totally shame. destroyed. Oh, it's yeah. heartbreaking if it's your business, isn't it? It, it is. is. Like, especially like I know the like, paddle centre was a new new operation yeah. as mm-hmm. well. Like, Coming up to the weekend, and everyone's probably was looking forward well, we to playing or had things well, booked we? in Jersey's had a rough 12 months if you look back to what happened yeah. in Jersey ahead of last Christmas with the fishing boat tragedy and then obviously the pier road explosion there's been other you know fatal road accidents in, in Jersey that we know of over this past year people going and missing yes of course yeah there's been a, a, you know so a big storm like this wasn't particularly what they wanted yeah, um, no. and um, so I just, can I also yeah. think about northern France yeah, yes. we, yeah. We're, we're talking about 100 mile an hour winds. I think they hit 125 mile an hour gusts. Wow. Um, slightly earlier in. I think they had widespread electricity outages as well um, throughout much of Thursday in certain parts. So, whereas as far as we're concerned, I don't think any utilities went down. Apart in, from your trip. Apart from my trip switch went. Um, but the grid. The when grid you said that, gone. I thought, oh, the power's gone. Yeah. You, why is the kit's power gone down and it was a trip switch? Yeah, yeah. just a trip switch. <laughs> Um, and but it dissipated quite a lot before it hit the UK. It wasn't as it, it did, yeah. yeah. So Cornwall, naturally, and Devon were hit very hard in the early hours of the morning. It did sweep up, and um, an amber warning was shifted from the whole of the south coast to sort of the Kent and Sussex area. I think some schools were shut as well. There was flooding. There were definitely trees down. It was a, it was a windy night for them, um, but um, fortunately. Um, lots of the southern coast of England has scathed it, which is why we haven't really heard too much from the uh, UK broadcasters. I think what you, what you see now, though, is the effects that it's continuing to have in Europe. Mm. Mm. Um, some like extreme weather warnings in, in Greece, there's flooding in Italy, um, and, and people have died as a result of that. So mm. I think, well, well, we're moving on. Um, there's it's obviously some, some really bad things happening elsewhere. And there's, of course, another storm coming in that's um, going to hit uh, France and Spain, Portugal in the next few hours. Are we getting any of that in Saturday? Because I know there was another front coming along. I think this is the, the same front, but it's it's all just sort of moved south. Right. Okay. Um, and it's developed a bit. But um, Bay of Biscay, obviously famously windy, it's going to be um, pretty interesting over the next few days for anyone out on the water and anyone on the coast. I think the forecast has dropped, um, but we're definitely expecting it to be very wet and windy. Yeah here tomorrow um one of the things that i've found useful over the last few days because yeah i, I did actually study gcse geography a long time ago so i can't remember how all these things did, work i did a degree in it but there's a lot of amateur weather enthusiasts we said right at the very beginning the yes. interest in weather is huge um, and there's a lot of amateur weather um forecasters including the guernsey weather enthusiasts um, who've got a Facebook page. Um, so I was looking at a lot of their kind of content in the run-up to and during the storm, um, which I found very useful. Um, it was almost or more explained in a way that I yeah. could understand about the, the fronts moving in and the low pressure and some of the uh, radar images that they've shared with the tracks for Storm Kieran um, about how where it was projected to move and where it actually did move, which explains why Jersey and Northern France were hit worse than us. So that was very interesting to follow. 
Absolutely. Mm. And the community all came together to give people each other information and share what was going on. And we clearly saw that people were very interested in the in the content that we were providing and the videos that we were sharing. So um, it shows that people really pull together at a, at a time like this. Um, I just want to touch base quickly on, we've talked about Jersey Old and did anyone hear much from Sark? I mean, I saw a couple of videos of some greenhouses blowing away and um, there was a video this morning of uh, one of the roofs, what, what's the place called? The- I, can't, I can't remember exactly the place, but it's one of the sort of bed and breakfast sort of log cabin places yeah. um, that I believe is the Caldridge's by the Caldridge's. Yeah. Yes. Um, That's near the coupe, so yeah. Yeah. exposed. Very exposed. Very exposed. Um, I saw some pictures of definitely some trees down in Sark, I think in like the Decar Valley area. Yeah. Um, and in Herm, I think there's superficial damage. I think from Herm, they said no one injured. You know, no one yeah. had to be moved out of their home or anything, but lots of... Uh, because on the day, there was medivacs were, were not going to be yeah. able to mm-hmm. be run yeah. uh, because they couldn't fly. So um, well, it's, we, got, we got off lucky, but it's, um, you know, it's tough for those who've suffered some damage. But um, At least we've got a dry spell today for some more clear exactly, up to go ahead. Exactly, cycling in today. <laughs> You've been listening to a Bailiwick Express podcast. If you like what you heard, please share, like and subscribe so we at Bailiwick can continue to pull apart the stories that affect you, the listener. Thank you for joining us.